getting carried away. We have a great uh, half an hour show for you. It's jam-packed with nothing but excitement and uh, me. So here's what's on the show. Harvey Danger, everybody. Make some little, a uh, little bit of your New Jersey love for Harvey Danger. All right, great band to see live as well, we might mention. We're gonna bring out and talk to them just a little bit. First of all, I wanted to let you know, uh, our question of the day today, what is your most interesting concert experience? Think about that. Think of all the shows that you guys have seen here in the New Jersey area. Hey, man, I'm doing a, a television show here, bucko. Talk louder. That's Mr. Jägermeister over there, everybody. Give him a round of applause. There's always a heckler on the boardwalk. Uh, keep it going for Harvey Danger. Come on out, guys. What's happening? How's it going? Good to see you. Come on down. Jeff, Sean, Evan, Aaron, Crab. Are we a little warm? A little bit. Very warm. Hey warmer guys. every second. Warm enough. What's going on? Not much. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us in New Jersey. Well, Have you spent much time me. down here, anybody? Uh, no. This is our first time. Yeah. First time. What is, what is your impression of uh, the Seaside Heights boardwalk here? It's uh, warm and, and sexually attractive. I was just about to say that same thing regarding your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Except you. for the warm part. Um, congratulations on Flag Pulse City. Are, are you guys just going nuts now? It's just like every day now is an interview or something related to the huge success of this, this single that's out now? It's work now, where before it was um, play. <laughs> but now we work uh, by playing shows and by doing interviews and by hanging out on boardwalks and stuff like that. All right. Like the man said, it's nice work if you can get it. <laughs> Have you guys been reading up? Do you follow like what critics say about uh, Harvey Danger in general? Oh, no. We try not to. Are you sensitive to that? A little bit. You're supposed to have a thick skin, but I think it takes a few bad reviews to develop one. Right. And uh, we've never had any reviews for a long time, so now we get some that are good and some that are bad. So it's a little rough. Right. Some, some good ones are in foreign languages. <laughs> so right, we got a read. French yeah. four-star review. What are, what, can, you, can you think of anything that you've read that just you've just gone, oh, this is just crap? Like, yeah. You've been really disappointed by. Like, uh, Entertainment Weekly said that they were um, threatened by our overt sexuality, <laughs> <laughs> and then the latest issue. And so that was that was hard to read. Now what the hell do they know? I know exactly. <laughs> anything else? That's. Uh, there was a review in a certain major magazine. I think. What was it, Spin, Rolling Stone? We're Rolling all we Stone, I think, something yeah. like that. Um, but they made some sort of implication that we were a band that was put together by like, a record label or a lawyer or something right. like that, yeah. which um, is patently false. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I read that about they, Bush, too. They were house painters in England, and, like, they, were, and they were also like, good-looking, and they just put them together. That's, I mean, that's sort of how it happened with us. <laughs> Except it's yeah, yeah, yeah. good looking we're also damn good looking. <laughs> right. You were house painters, though. Yeah. Now, tell us about the other songs on this record, other than Flag Pulse This material isn't brand new material. No. Uh, the album actually was released uh, a year ago this week, I think, uh, on a very small label in uh, New York City called the Arena Rock Recording Company. And uh, it sat around for about six months. You know, we played shows in Seattle, as we always had done. We've been together for like five years, and um, and then you know it's being played on college radio and uh, the local show on commercial radio. Then all of a sudden, commercial radio, the requests started coming in, and then the Seattle station, the Was end, it the end, yeah, the end added it to their rotation. Then other stations added it, and we had no, you know, label or no, you know, no one was like calling people to make them add it. It right. was like happened all by itself, and and so. All these labels started calling. And but it's quick, right? I mean, it's like overnight almost. Is really? Do you feel the effect of that? I overnight mean, after five years, yeah. But it's, it's true. It was all, right. It was I don't totally mean that you're overnight. Sudden. Right. But when it does happen, it may take five years to happen. It happens so fast. Yeah. And it was. I mean, it was. It couldn't have been any uh, less expected by us. Right. And uh, it's true. Like everything in our lives changed. Like what? I mean, like anything for... What's the worst thing that you've noticed? We never would have seen New Jersey, probably. Right. Uh, well, thank that. God that you hit it big to, see, to be here. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the video for this. How much of a, a concept did you guys have for this, or was it just like the record company's like, here's your budget, this is a cool treatment, we're going to do it? We wrote the treatment, and we sort of came... We had to do it on short notice. Okay. But uh, we got it over to the director, Liz Friedlander, who'd done stuff with uh, like Alanis Morissette, and so because we're so much like Alanis Morissette, <laughs> it was decided that uh, 
that um, we would work with her. But she was great, and she turned it around in a really like short amount of time, and and uh, and really made it look good, like a video it's supposed to. All right. Um, some of the lyrics in the song are uh, a bit out there. How do we explain the song lyrically? Uh, it's, it's probably best not to explain it. And let me, don't be so analytical. But don't necessarily let read Entertainment flow, Weekly either. Oh, yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> Use your interpretation of it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's sort of, it's not meant to be taken literally. It's just sort of, you know, the, it's like a, it's a parody about the, uh, the kind of rant against consumption song, pop music, and, and uh, it's, really it's sort of about language, but I, you know. I think one cool thing is that, uh, such a great pop song came out of Seattle. I don't know why, but I just I'm so in tuned with so much grunge movement there, and it's just great to see like you guys come out of that Seattle region. Seattle's a major pop hot spot. <laughs> um, the Posies and Young Fresh Fellows and a lot of great bands have been there for years, carrying the pop flag. And right. newer bands too, like uh, Severna Park and uh, Death Cab uh, for Cutie yeah, and Peter Parker, all are playing like and you know like also flop and. For years, there have been bands and, uh, that play pop music, and the heavier stuff got famous, but the pop was always there. And so, but we never really were a part of any of those scenes anyway, except right. as observers. Right. And so, uh, and we we kind of stumbled on pop music by accident. Right. It seems like a good time for that, especially with the release of this song. Just the summer and the, and the whole vibe to it seems to feel really good. What's um what's he, what's immediately following this? Are you guys still in like a tailspin? Uh, it's bad. I think we're starting to get used to it. Yeah. I mean, we're getting used to uh, the six of us. That's in the our, our crew guys. Yeah. Uh, living in the van, and driving all over the country, you know, week after week. Um, Never ever seeing Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A few months ago, we we lived in our apartments. That's the major difference. And now we live on four benches and right. four wheels. And, That's cool. Um, but yeah, we're starting to eat these too. That's great. Well, we're glad to have you guys here. We're going to take just a quick break. We're just checking out the video there too. Harvey Danger, when we get back. And our audience's lyrical knowledge. We're going to see what they know. And we'll be right back with more Harvey Danger. And this fine program is called Carson Daly. the show Carson Daly. I'm joined by the band you just saw, Harvey Danger. We're here, we're hanging out, we're baking, is what we're doing. I can feel my, le my leg feels like a giant sizzling right now. The Move fat over, is, bacon. Like a George bacon. Foreman infomercial. Look at the fat, it just defrosted. All right, where the hell am I going with this? We're about to uh, test the uh, lyrical knowledge of our audience here in Seaside Heights, New Jersey. With the help of the band, we'll do that in a minute. First, let's take some answers for our question today. What's the most interesting concert experience you've had at a concert? And I guarantee the Grateful Dead somehow is going to come up in this. Who's uh, first? Are you They're first? very interesting. I, I went to the Puff Daddy and Family concert, and Buster Rhymes came out on stage on a robe, and he ended up buck naked, and he was well hung. Oh. Oh. Interesting. You didn't even give me a second to, like, somehow come up with a clever way of asking. You're just like, <laughs> yeah. he's like a horse, is basically what you're <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Wow. That's the punchline. That just ruined my experience from the concert, too. I was going to say something about the Eagles, and now it just sucks compared to that. All right, who's Don next? Henley. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don Henley did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a little dog. We were at uh, a Fiona Apple concert, and we were out in the lobby, and we met her mom and her aunt, who were kind of getting a little drunk, and they were telling us stories about Fiona Apple and how she writes all over her um, stairs and all over her room, and there's no place left in her room. It's all filled with the words. And we, like... We met the grandparents, like the cousins, the nephews, and we got like their addresses, and we ended up backstage. Like we, no one was allowed backstage, but somehow they got back there and they got things signed for us and everything. So basically, the Fiona Apple's family adopted you, and, and basically made it very easy for you to stalk her if you would like to. <laughs> we know their real last name and where they live. Well, go ahead and tell us. Yeah, National TV. Yeah. What the hell is it? I would be interested. Hmm, Atlanta, I mean, uh, if you want Apple, Apple, did something weird and bizarre. Hmm, <laughs> so interesting. 
Who writes your speeches? Did you ask him that? <laughs> <laughs> that drunk aunt of hers? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Fiona. Little fee, just a joke. That's what we do here. We make jokes. All right, what's, uh, who's next? Concert experience, is that it? Yeah. How about you guys? Do you guys have a good one? Um, I, have a, I have a concert experience that was concert interesting. Concert confession. Yeah, it's more embarrassing than interesting. And it involves Fiona Apple. Uh, <laughs> last year, around November, we were playing a show at the Crocodile Cafe in Seattle, and we thought it would be a good idea to cover Criminal by Fiona Apple, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> during the song, we got to the instrumental part in the middle, and it's a really good song. We were playing it a little differently than Ms. Apple plays it. Uh, and I vomited. <laughs> During the instrumental break, I just sort of, I, I felt it coming up. I used to get really drunk before we played. I don't do it anymore after yeah. this moment. And, and uh, I, I turned around and heaved forth my uh, that, stomach contents. And then, but then I turned right back around and didn't miss a note. Didn't miss a note. Really? <laughs> That means you're a real I've professional. I've been a bad, means. bad girl. You've been a bad, bad girl. Did you do it in little panties like she was in the video? <laughs> did, you, did you jump into a tub and start crying? No, it was... <laughs> <laughs> only when I got home. <laughs> right. It's good you saved Where that there stuff. there are but, no cameras. Sure. Uh, Harvey Danger, right there, everybody. Uh, we're going to do a little something. We're going to test you guys' lyrical knowledge right now. Did we come up with a name for this yet? We were thinking of one. The College of Musical Knowledge. The College knowledge. of Musical Knowledge. That's what we're going to call it right now. <laughs> you guys, we're gonna, each of you are going to read uh, lyrics to popular songs, and we're going to see if our audience can just sort of... This is something you can play on a really long car ride. Or if you're in prison ever. Do it with the like other... That. Gather the cellmates and go do this very same thing. With the out-of-state license. All right, why don't we start with you and go ahead and read the first one. If you know <clears> it, just raise your hand, and then we'll call on you to stand up, and we'll see if you can sing it. It's a bit of an oldie. Do you take sugar, one lump, or two? Anybody have Anybody? any clue? I have no clue. You want to? Uh, uh, yeah, what do you think? Where's the microphone? There, Erica. Grab that right there. Thanks. Is this Def Leppard? <laughs> Is that right? What's the name of the song? Pour Some Sugar On Me? Yeah. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen. What's your name? Don't sweep the tape. Heather? Heather? I take the microphone. <laughs> You're the only person here who knew that. I feel like the oldest person here. <laughs> you want to sing some of this for us? Pour some sugar. Yeah, Heather! Yeah. All right, who's next? Go ahead. All right. Also an old one. Who am I? I'm a cowboy. On a steel horse, I ride. Oh, that one's oh, easy. Oh, a wave of old. Oh, All right, just pick crowd. someone back there, Erica. Go to, go to near the back. Door. That's a Bon Jovi, right? What was the song? Uh, Dead or Alive, is that right? That's exactly That's very right. close. You want to go ahead and sing something? Come on, sing on the... You want to sing on the for us? Sing it? Yeah, you want to? Uh, Try it. What the, what is, you're amongst friends. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I'm a cowboy on a steel horse. Is that, is that your boyfriend next to you? <laughs> the one burying his head in the sand. <laughs> the one scraping his tattoo of your name off his shoulder. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was great. Thank you very much. D do they win anything? No. That's how the car show works. Yeah. Here, here's a bucket of dirt. Thanks for winning. <laughs> All right. Want to read another one? Yes. Uh, Oh, this is a new one. When it comes to beets, well, I'm a fiend. <laughs> I like sugar with coffee and cream. <laughs> I work for MTV as a host. I don't know any of these. I'm oh. bad. Bad. Anybody? I've been a bad, bad girl. It's brand new. Anybody? Right back here? Run right over. There's Erica, ladies and gentlemen, sprinting. Yeah. We like to call her Goldilocks, by the way. Is that uh, BC Boys and Inter Intergalactic Planetary? Yes, yes, that is absolutely right. What is your name, sir? My hat's off. Man. Man. These people are amazing. Into the mic. Oh, Jason. Jason, very good. You're up on your BC Boys. Oh, oh yeah. No kidding. What's your favorite BC Boys album? Uh, Paul Satie. Uh, Gotta be, dude. It has to be. That's the correct answer. Nah. Oh, but it's just a great record, though. Which yeah, is Ill, Ill Communication. Sure. I All like right. it. You like Ill Communication better than Paul Satie? Anything other than the first album is my favorite. Really? Um, yeah, they're really good. I like Ill Communication. But I, the first album was the frat boy song yeah. from my youth right. that I really resented. Ah, okay, we won't go there, though. That's Deep Dark Moments. Yeah. Uh, do we have time for one more? Nope, that's it. That's all the time we have for ours. Oh, oh. Reader's really quick, though, just because we don't right. want it to be left out. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Anybody? <laughs> Who is it? Just yell it out. 
Third Eye Blind. Third Eye Blind, is that right? Yeah. All right, very good. Tough lyrics there in the Third Eye Blind song. No, it's, it's, it's all right, uh, I'm pretty impressed. That's all the time we have for this little fun game, but when we get back, we'll have much more in the sun. She's out of New Jersey on this show with Harvey Danger. We'll be right back. <laughs> Doggy teeth in high school because I had big buck teeth. Like before I got braces and I wore headgear and like retainers and stuff. And I had this gap in my seriously. I'm a late I'm a late bloomer. See the girls that are laughing? That's that just brings back familiar laughter. <laughs> I killed sophomores like you. But I I'm proud I can still do my waterfall trick. That's the point of that story. Welcome back to the show. My name is Carson Daly. I'm a talented man, apparently. The water goes through my big fat teeth. We're here with uh, Harvey Danger. We just saw a clip there of uh, Siv, which I was stoked to have come down the show. I'm always a big fan of the Warp Tour. It was always the sort of tour that I always liked the most for some reason. Have you guys uh, ever worked with Civ before? Or? We've never worked with them, um, but uh, the guy who produced our album, John Goodmanson, apparently just did a record with them. And oh, so, really? Yeah, it, it, he said they're really great guys. Yeah, and they're good. Stuff, so, and yeah. the Civettes, we saw them dancing up there as well. Uh, we're back with the, the Civettes rule. <laughs> Uh, we're back here with our question of the day. Uh, what's your most interesting concert experience? We're going to talk to our audience who's down here. You're first. What's your name? My name is JP. What's up, JP? Um, well, Carson, I found the real field of dreams. I was in East Rutherford, New Jersey at a Dave Matthews concert. Yeah. Doing my uh, pre-concert activity, drinking. In the uh, parking lot? Yes. Right uh, lots of it. And a lot of girls were, too. Yeah. Um, we went out oh, to a field yeah. because we couldn't wait on the line. By the way, big partying on Dave Matthews. Woo! <laughs> that guy's insane. I'm sorry. Go ahead. go ahead. Well, we went out to a field and we saw about 500 girls, pants down around the ankles. What? Just relieving themselves. We even got it on video tape. I'll send you. You one. mean a, like a mass group urination? <laughs> mass. Like mega mass. Really? All girls. All girls. The fountain of youth. God bless them. I have like a Jonestown kind wow, of thing. Wow, I think that deserves a round of applause. For you, girls. It's funny. I went to a, um, a Pearl Jam concert in, uh, you know, they started playing like obscure places like polo fields and things like that. I saw them in Indio, California, right outside Palm Springs, and they, they had no restrooms there for the public. And it reminded me of that. There was literally people, like mothers, daughters, just like urinating everywhere on each other, <laughs> on each other, <laughs> marking territory. What some of the setting up uh, theoretically urinating. balconies. Urinating together in a field. Where yeah, <laughs> that was Seattle. Interesting. That stuff happens all the time. Yeah, it's know. a normal thing in Seattle. Who's next? Hi, um, what's your name? Brian. Hey, what's up? Um, a couple months ago, me and my friends went to see the Rolling Stones in concert, and my friend thought she was really cool because she drank a real lot out in the parking lot. And yeah. by the time we got her back to the seat, she threw up in front, like on all the people in front of us, oh. and they had to leave. I'll tell you what about that. It seems re like a really good idea to get like wasted before a concert, and like everybody does it. It's really not. I was really excited to see the Eagles. This is going back to my experience, concert experience. I really was excited to see them when they did the reunion show, and I got so excited. I did the same thing. I was like just celebrating a little too early, and I pat. They, the show opens. I'm up in the thing, and I'm so excited. It's like three hours. They open with Hotel California, and I'm freaking out. Like I'm like, oh, here's the show. Next thing I know, I come to. They're in the third encore. <laughs> they're doing like New York Minute. Like Don Henley's doing his thing. I missed the whole. Thing. It's a stupid thing to do. If you do it, do it in moderation. That's what I say. <laughs> Anybody Pass else? out in no. moderation. <laughs> Pass out in moderation. That's exactly our motto. Uh, when you guys hit this tour and sort of like left Seattle, um, sort of doing what you're doing now, did you have jobs that you quit? You yeah. We were all for gainfully employed. Which is working. why we never toured before. Who was yeah. the toughest? Who was in the position that was toughest to get out of? Anybody have like a? Not a, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey. What were you doing? Uh, I worked for a software company. 
occasionally so while he was computer. mainly running yeah. Harvey Danger stuff out of the back room. It's not true. <laughs> it didn't work. Did you walk in and just go, I'm out of here, uh, I'm on my way? How much notice um, did you give them? <laughs> like a month. Like that. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, Aaron and I worked at a newspaper called The Stranger in Seattle, um, which is a, a big favorite of all the crew of the real world. Oh, really? You know? <laughs> and uh, Evan worked at The Rocket as assistant art director. Yeah. And so those were really good jobs. They were hard to quit just because we really liked them. Oh, right. But this is a better job. Uh, how's it going with uh, Semisonic who you're on the road with? Uh, it's going well. We're just playing a few shows with them, um, but it's going as well as could be expected. And we have like just like under a minute here, but um, you're going to be going out with Grantley Buffalo. That's yeah. right. Briefly Very tell exciting. us, you guys are all excited about yeah, that. Yeah, we're pretty thrilled about we that. We played with them once in L.A., and they were fantastic. And They're they an amazing were band. They're new great albums. guys. I think you've made one leap of success just even getting out on the road playing your music for people, and now it seems like it'll go to another level. You'll be able to do that with somebody that you personally enjoy. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Very absolutely. good. And congratulations on all the success. And, uh, and I know that you're interested in making a new album already, which may seem weird to people, but we look forward to it. Yeah. Well, we, um, we have... Uh, well, this album, as I said, it's been out for like a year right. for us. Um, it's still new to all these people we're being exposed to now for the first time. Right. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, we're salty to you're, record again. But you're rocking right now. Things are going well. Ladies and gentlemen, Harvey Danger, give it up for them. Thank you so much for having us. That's all the time we have. We'll see you tomorrow. We have a very special fashion show of sorts. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.